Hello and welcome back. My name is Mary Grace Farron, also known as Rue of Rue's Kitchen. And in this video, we're going to I'm going to do a little walk through, little clumsy flip through um, one of my um, favorite tarot decks for myself, really, like just to read for myself or to meditate. And it is um, the Inner Child Cards of Fairy Tale Tarot by Isha Lerner and Mark Lerner. And this is what, I think this is the current edition. And um, I used to have the first edition, which the cards are different. They were glossier. And this is, I think, the current edition that's now available. I don't know where my first edition ended up. I, you know, potentially lost it in a move or who knows. Maybe it's somewhere in the house. Um... But this one, I lucked out and had to rescue it from a used bookstore. I have this thing that if I see thing, if I see books or decks of authors and artists that I really respect, uh, I always feel like I need to rescue their work from whatever um, place that I find it in the secondary market. So here goes. Now, what I discovered when I got this deck is that it was quite different in terms of cardstock. My original uh, first edition had glossy cards. It was a completely different cardstock. These are thinner. They're more uh, your average cardstock. So I had to do a little bit of uh, surgery when I got them. Also, they were a little um, chewed up. They weren't, they weren't in bad shape, but the edges were a little chipped. Um, from the previous user. So this is what, this is the card size of what it used to be. And this is what it is now. So you, it, when I put them together like this, you can see that I just barely took a little bit off the edges. And I'll explain why. This is what the card, the cards used to look like. And you see that little thin white border around it. There's nothing wrong with it. I didn't mind it. But because I didn't like the backs, I changed them by applying contact paper. And the contact paper I selected was Distressed Wood. And I pretty much just bought it on Amazon. It's a very lengthy process. Um, you have to really love a deck to reback it. There's 78 cards. And you cannot make a mistake. Like, you know, there's no bubbles in this. And yeah, so this was a labor of love seriously and I love the way they look with these backs and the other reason why I like the main reason I ended up trimming the outer white border is not because they bothered me in any way it was because when you apply contact paper to the card and you cut around it um, you're left with like these little slivers of sticky contact paper that your scissor didn't catch and if you go to try to shave it or with an exacto knife or what you know and to make it flush make the contact paper flush with the card you run the risk of slicing your card and damaging it so after i sat i sat with this deck for a week after i had changed the backs on them I decided that you know what I didn't like the uh, the sticky bits that were sticking out the um, the edges of the cards so I went and I just trimmed just the white edge around it and oh my gosh I just love the way they look and I've seen on YouTube where people have trimmed the cards right down removing the outer borders but I love the way this looks because the Major Arcana has its own border and every and all four suits have their own their own border. So we'll do a flip through of the deck. And this way you can see what they look like. I love this deck. It is not the type of tarot deck that you do a divination reading with. It is not the type of deck I don't I well for my use, it is not the type of deck that you would um, do a 12 card spread with. I think at the maximum I've done a three card spread with this and even then it seemed to be too much. There's so much detail in these cards. And 
oh, I probably should have mentioned that the major arcana, okay, uh, little red cap. So little red cap is um, was also is also known as little red riding hood, but the original story is little red cap. Major arcana uh, is about has the title of different fairy tales. So in case it's all blurry and you can't see it out of focus, this is Aladdin and the Magic Lamp is the magician. The High Priestess is the Fairy Godmother. And you could see the pumpkin. So this is the Fairy Godmother from Cinderella. The Empress is Mother Goose. The Emperor is the Emperor, the new clothes. The Hierophant is the wizard. The lovers is Hansel and Gretel. You know, making a choice. You know how the lovers card is all about, ma you know, choices. Well, they made a choice to go into uh, that witch's uh, house because they wanted candy. Or they made a choice to eat her house. You see what I'm saying. The chariot is Peter Pan. Strength, Beauty and the Beast. Um, the Hermit is Snow White. Probably should come closer. Sorry, guys. Ah, here we go. The Wheel of Fortune, Alice in Wonderland. Oop, here we go. Scusi. Sorry about the poor framing. It's Cinema Verité, as I always tell you. Uh, the Midas Touch, Justice. Jack and the Beanstalk is the hangman. Look, okay, maybe I should have paused a little bit. Look at the detail. At first, when I first got these cards, the first, um, the first incarnation of these cards, the first printing, I thought, oh my gosh, these are so busy and all these colors I feel assaulted. But you know what? As you work with them, Ah, they worm away into your heart. They worm their way into your heart. Thirteen, death is Sleeping Beauty, which I think is a beautiful choice for, for death because Sleeping Beauty goes to sleep for a very long time, but she does wake up. So there's that whole transformation. The Guardian Angel for Temperance. The Big, red, the big Bad Wolf. The devil, and if you think of, if you think about the story of the three little pigs, you know the three little pigs were kind of uh, you know jerks too, so <laughs> it's uh, it's very fitting. Rapunzel, the tower, wishing upon a star. For the star. I just love the artwork in these cards and I think by modifying them I got to spend so much time with them and ponder these images and what these stories mean. Cinderella is the moon. The yellow brick road the sun. And then we come back to the three little pigs. Judgment. And then an interesting choice for the world card, number 21 of the Major Arcana, is the Earth Child. So that was the Major Arcana. The next suit we're going, I'm going to flip through is the Suit of Wands. And we'll start with the Ace of Wands, and you'll see how the borders have changed for wands. It's very wandsy, it's beautiful. This card is so evocative of the Ace of Wands creation, burst of creativity, and also it implies transformation with the butterfly. Absolutely gorgeous. And then we have the Two of Wands. 
these, you know, the, I don't, it's not picking it up. Like in person, they look so lush and so rich, but limitations of webcam. Three of Wands. Sorry about the glare. Let me try to fix that. Here we go. Four of Wands. Five of Wands. Ugh, the Six of Wands is beautiful. Dancing around the maypole. Seven of Wands. The Seven of Wands has a little bit of that Four of Swords kind of energy to it. You know, waiting to see what happens. Eight of Wands. Big bonfire. Nine of Wands. I love the fence in the Nine of Wands. Ten of Wands. This is an interesting take on the Ten of Wands. Usually, like in Rider weight, they would be, you know, overburdened, taking on too much. Here it seems to just be some kind of culmination. But it's also quiet and peaceful. Child of Wands, traditionally the Page of Wands and other decks, well in Rider Waite at least. Seeker of Wands is the equivalent of the Knight of Wands and here it's depicted there's a, you know, a young girl. Beautiful. The Guide of Wands we have here. It appears to be the Pied Piper and Guardian of Wands. So it has that old world um, fairy tale vibe to it, but it also at the same time it has that new world cosmic vibe. So the next suit we're going to um, look at is the is the suit of swords. So the suits have changed. The suit has changed. So so has the board. So have the borders. And I just I just love the borders on these cards. Typically I'm a borderless kind of girl. I'm all about you know, slight. The first thing that goes is the border on the cards that I purchase that I use for reading. But these I just love these borders. I could not cut them off. And you see the difference between this was the wands and this is um, swords. And the wands has that greenery, like that growth um, kind of color scheme. And these have yellow clouds, yellow both um, for the air element and also the clouds. Beautiful. Ace of swords. And you see ace of swords. It's Excalibur in the stone. Two of Swords. A different take on the Two of Swords. Three of Swords. Typically, the Three of Swords is the heart with the Three of Swords. Um, stabbed into it. So this is a nice, it's an interesting take on the Three of Swords. Four of Swords. The guidebook is really extensive. The guidebook is, I will show you the guidebook when I'm done flipping through the cards. Five of Swords. Six of Swords. It's a little victory celebration. 
which is interesting because victory is typically the six of wands, but this one gives that um, job well done, we're moving on kind of vibe, which works for me. Seven of Swords. Eight of Swords. Look at that. The guidebook goes, the guidebook's really good though. It describes, you know, sometimes the guidebooks are just the meanings of the cards regurgitated from, you know, what we already know from other, this is this, this is the Ten of Swords and I love the use of the Ouroboros in this. You know, typically guidebooks just regurgitate what, you know, every other guidebook has said about cards but this one I love when a guidebook talks about the actual images the specific images used in a deck and why they were chosen or what they mean guardian of swords and then we move on to the next suit which is Winged hearts. Winged hearts are cups. Ace of swords. So I'm going to pick up the pace a little bit now. Otherwise, this, this is going to be a really long video. So this has an aquatic theme, of course, because it's cups and it's subconscious and it's emotions. Beautiful. I love the coloration of these cards. I know I've said that before, but I love how distinct the coloration is from suit to suit. And I love, love, love the mermaidy, the mermaids and the aquatic theme. The seahorses in the margin here, like not in the margin, in the borders, the seahorses, which, you know, in Italian folk magic are wards against the evil eye and and spells and such and I don't know. Also, I'm originally from Connecticut, I'm originally from New England, and anything ocean themed really does sing to me. Look at this, just beautiful. So the child is the page. The knight. In this case, it actually is a depiction of a knight. The queen, his guide, king, his guardian. And now for the last suit, we have Chris. It's the suit of crystals. The suit of crystals is the renamed suit of pentacles and you'll see a nice beautiful earthy vibe to this one if you see on the in the borders here you see the um, the oak leaves and the mushrooms toads in the corner Here's the two of pentacles, the seesaw here harkens back the, you know, balancing of the two, juggling the two pentacles. The three of crystals, oh my goodness, look how cute this is. Four of crystals. This is an interesting take on the five of pentacles the five of crystals five of pentacles is one of my favorite cards it's one of those cards that you look at it and i remember when i first learned i was first learning tarot <laughs> the book i was using five of pentacles only had one word as a meaning and it was misery but over the many decades i've been reading i've been able to really appreciate the five of pentacles and what it means it's sometimes you're down on your luck, sometimes other people are down on their luck, sometimes you're the giver of comfort, and sometimes you're the one receiving comfort. 
and I just love again of course I love this deck who would spend I spent weeks modifying this deck in in you know backing it and then trimming it and I had also edged it at one point but then when I trimmed the outer the outer border the edging came off too right so I may may have to edge it just haven't decided what color to edge it with the eight of crystals the eight of pentacles it's not entirely rider weight oh that's what I wanted to mention so the, again this deck is um, when you read the guidebook you can read it rider weight and there is some rider weight influence in it but it it really has its own flavor like I said it's you take these ancient stories these ancient um, fairy tale fairy tales the these ancient archetypes and then you give them a bit of a cosmic twist and they're very mystical they're not just they're for instance oh my goodness I wish I had remembered that when I had showed you the seven of um, winged hearts which is a seven of cups instead of it being your typical rider weight seven of cups where there's that there's the figure looking at seven cups and each cup has something in it and they're either overwhelmed by their choices or they're plagued by crazy imagination or crazy imaginings and or paranoia like all those other reasons that come with it with the seven of winged hearts in this deck it's very mystical the the guidebook talks more about the mystical nature of the number seven so these cards this deck is also very numero numerological in terms of um, its meanings. This, I love this card. I think it's, it's probably the, my favorite card in the whole deck. I'm not saying a lot. It's the Child of Crystals. It's also my stalker card in this deck. And the Child of Crystals is... Um, let's say the page of pentacles in other decks uh, I'll use the example as uh, of Rider weight which is um, I don't know this card is it has a little it has a different twist to it this is this this card calls me to ponder um, life ponder you know ponder you know stop and you know watch the pond and you know observe nature and what's my place in nature what's my place in this world who am I and what is my place in this world beautiful card I've posted it on my Instagram and that picture does it justice I, I think a bit better than here in the video seeker of crystals there's our our friend from the Wizard of Oz, am I right? Yeah, the lion. The Guide of Crystals. Interesting choice for the Guide of Crystals because you know, again, if we're look, if we're thinking in terms of the traditional tarot decks, uh, it would be the Queen of Pentacles, and here we have Saint Nicholas. And the King of Pentacles is Gaia. So at the risk of making this video too long, I'm still going to show you what I promised, which is the guidebook. Look at the size of this guidebook. It's a wonderful guidebook. You can tell by my little flags here that the first part here. So the guidebook is incredible. It's absolutely incredible. I'll show you, for instance, the Ten of Swords here. This is what it the Ten of Swords look like. So yeah, you, you know, it's the black and white photo of the card on one side, and it's the description on the right hand side. And you think you know what the Ten of Swords is 
based on whatever tarot deck you learned on. But I'll just read you the Ten of Swords from this book, and then I'll let you go with that. Tria, I'm sorry, Triumph and Liberation. I need to put on my glasses because I'm middle-aged people. It's, it's what it is. Triumph and Liberation are in the air. The fully knighted youth in this card has come to accept his inner power. All right, let's see if I can find that card for you pretty quickly. Thank goodness they're still in order. So I can hold it up while I read about it because I'm that, I'm that person. I need both audio and visual. Triumph and liberation are in the air. The fully knighted youth in this card has come to accept his inner power. In the Nine of Swords, the dragon holds the boy captive because the boy is unable to see beyond his fear. So let me find the Nine of Swords for you. Here we go. So this is the Nine of Swords it talks about, and this is the Ten. In the Ten of, in the ten of Swords, the dragon is encircled by the boy's swords. symbolizing his immigration of the power and courage he needs to overcome terror and oppression. As he inserts the tenth sword into the ground, a circle is formed around the dragon, signifying that he has attained a unity of mind, spirit, and matter. You are now free to explore the start of a new cycle of conscious awareness. You have worked very hard to overcome mental blocks and tensions. You understand more about the courage it requires to cleanse the mind of negative thoughts for you have faced your dragon. The circle of life continues and you are now ready for a new round of adventures. When a future crisis arises, you will know what to do and use the wisdom and experience you have gained from the past and remember to nurture yourself along the path. The mind is very powerful. You must infuse it with kind and loving thoughts. Thank you for tuning in. It has been um, my pleasure to share with you one of my favorite cards, uh, favorite cards, favorite decks. I, like I said at the start, this is a deck that I utilize mainly to read for myself. It is a meditation deck. It is my go-to deck for inner child work, obviously by the title of the cards here. It is still widely available and I I recommend that if you're looking for something a little different because it really does have its own personality and flavor, uh, you might want to check this out. Thank you for tuning in. I wish you all a beautiful day. Bye-bye.